When you think about biology, you inevitably think about this item right here, which hopefully you recognize to be DNA, because it's something that we've been talking about since day one, and we'll continue to talk about it because the DNA that's inside the cell um, of any organism or inside all of the cells inside your body, for example, determines pretty much everything about how that cell or organism functions. So we're going to start looking at that in this unit. First, we're going to focus on the structure of DNA. Remember that within a eukaryotic cell, such as this one right here, the DNA is always found in the nucleus of the cell. And then the DNA in eukaryotic organisms is organized into chromosomes. So this is what the chromosome would look like during um, mitosis, for example, when the cell's dividing, it's all organized. Um, and if we were to zoom in super close, we would see the DNA looks like this. And oftentimes, you will hear this referred to as the double helix because it's made up of two strands and they're twisted around. But let's look at this in more detail. Here's that same double helix, but now we have a couple of other letters on here that I want to talk about. So you see this S and P. It goes S, P, S, P, S, P, etc. And then we have these other letters, A, C, G, and here's a T. Okay. These represent kind of the key items of DNA, and these are all parts of what we call a nucleotide. So right here is one nucleotide within here, or if we look over at this nucleotide, kind of blown up bigger for us to see, and hopefully you remember from the beginning of the year when we were talking about organic molecules, that a nucleotide is the building block or the monomers of nucleic acids such as DNA. The sugar that we find in DNA is called deoxyribose. Deoxyribose. This is an E, sorry. Um, and that is the name of the sugar that gives DNA its name, right? It's deoxyribonucleic acid. Um, also attached as or part of the nucleotides, we have our sugar, deoxyribose sugar, or five carbon sugar, because even though we can't see it, there would be a carbon here, 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 and then one here, so five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, so we have a five carbon sugar, deoxyribose, and we have a phosphate group. That's with the sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate. Those are the S and P's all along the sides. And then the other part we have is the nitrogen base right over here. This specific nitrogen base is adenine. You can see here we have adenine. There's also thymine, guanine, and cytosine. In these letters, the G, C, A, and T are short for those nitrogen bases. Here we have the four nitrogen bases in a little bit more detail. So here's adenine and thymine, guanine, and cytosine. So we don't see the sugars and phosphates that would be kind of over here or over here, right? There'd be sugars and phosphates attached as well. What, a couple of things I want to point out to you. First of all, notice that adenine and guanine over here on this side are both made up of two rings, okay? Two carbon-based rings. These are known as purines. Over here, cytosine and thymine each are made up of a single ring. Okay. These are the pyrimidines. Okay. And this is all important because the DNA is made up of two strands. So they need to fit together. Um, so the, a purine always has to fit with a pyrimidine. So two rings fit with one ring. Okay. And the reason that we don't have adenine and cytosine fitting together, or guanine and thymine, has to do with these lines here in the middle. Okay? These lines represent hydrogen bonds. Okay? The hydrogen bond is a type of bond. Um, it's different from a covalent bond, which is the type of bond we talk about most often in biology. Um, and that's the kind that stores energy and that we, when we break off the phosphate and ATP, we're breaking a covalent bond. And it's covalent bonds that are holding the nucleotides together, the sugar and the phosphate and the nitrogen base. But what holds these two nitrogen bases together are hydrogen bonds. And you'll notice that between adenine and thymine, there's bases for two hydrogen bonds, whereas guanine and cytosine have three hydrogen bonds, right? One, two, three versus one, two. So that's why adenine and thymine 
always go together, and guanine and cytosine always go together. So we can say A with T and C with G. My high school biology teacher always used to say, Alice married Ted, Kathy married George, and that's still how I remember it today. Here's our overview of the structure of DNA, right? DNA, DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, is made up of nucleotides that all fit together. Okay? So we have the sugar phosphate backbone, which we can see here. It makes up things that like the handrails or the sides of the ladder. And then holding together the two sides of the ladder, or making up the rungs, are the nitrogen bases, right? So this would be considered one base pair, guanine, cytosine, adenine, and thymine are always going to be a base pair, and those base pairs are held together with hydrogen bonds. And when we talk more about the function of DNA and how it determines everything about our cells, we're really going to be paying attention to these nitrogen bases and what order they're in. And that's what determines all the proteins that are made and the enzymes and all sorts of fun things about your cells. So that will be our next unit. But first, before we talk about proteins, we're going to talk about how DNA replicates or makes copies of itself. So I want you to think about that, thinking about the structure of DNA. How could that structure be used for DNA replication?